Oh, there we go. Um, I am extremely happy and I'm proud to have uh, Sunil with us here. Uh, it's his first time in Finland. Um, Sunil and I are actually quite good friends. Uh, we live in London quite close to each other. Um, we do stupid things like jump into cold icy ponds in the winter. Um, and uh, he's also a founder of a company called PartyKid. In the past he's worked at Cloudflare, who is still not sponsoring this conference. Um, at the React Core team at, at Facebook, at Yahoo, that's how old he is. Uh, and uh, well, I mean, without further ado, uh, I'll, I'll give the stage to Sunil. Uh, hi, Helsinki. Um, uh, my name is Sunil. Uh, it's been a long couple of days, such a great conference. Uh, I want to take the opportunity first uh, to uh, be grateful to the organizers of the conference to bring me all the way here. I've actually been here for a week, uh, longer than a week now. I've been going around. Thanks, you, you host, so much for uh, entertaining all my visa issues, trying to get here. Um, while we're going to talk about technology and Cloudflare and all that, uh, I wanted uh, uh, one of the things that I like doing, especially when I go to new countries, is try to explore the food, uh, which means I've obviously been eating a lot of fish. Uh, but I went to the restaurant Seahorse, and that is the best steak I've eaten in my life. This happened four days ago, and I've been dreaming about it ever since. Uh, it looks like a slightly fancy plating, but I then also like broke it up. You can see it's steak and onions, a classic Finnish dish, apparently. And to give a sense of completion, that is what was left of the meal when I was done. It was an excellent meal. Uh, then this morning, uh, I went with Yanni and Sylvia, and we jumped into the ocean. Just absolutely gorgeous day. Um, uh, it was great. It gave me a big, a lot of zhuzh to come here and uh, tell you what I've been working on. Uh, so my name is Sunil. Uh, I've done a bunch of things in the past, most recently to do with edge computing. But like Yanni mentioned, I was on the React team for a while. Uh, I didn't do so well. Nobody really talks about my time there. Uh, I worked in a bank for a year. I don't talk about that. I don't recommend it. Uh, but I did work in Cloudflare, and I learned a bunch there. I was also on the same experience team as uh, Samuel. And uh, it was very interesting to see how powerful it is, but also how production ready it is. And uh, it, when you are surrounded by technology like that and very interesting, smart people who are looking to the future, uh, you start imagining what the future uh, looks like. Uh, and I've come up with a thesis. Uh, I, uh, my theory is that the future of the internet is truly multiplayer first. In fact, it's really the oldest of science fiction dreams. If any of you have watched Star Trek, you know Picard hits the little communicator and says, uh, someone in uh, engineering, uh, and they're like, Captain, the dilithium crystal, whatever, and it's instantaneous. Like That's how communication is supposed to be. The internet was supposed to bring us together. Uh, but you don't really see a lot of people building these complex real-time collaborative apps. Um, and the reason for that is that it turns out building and maintaining that infrastructure is complex. It's a distributed systems problem, which is one of the hardest problems. Uh, uh, there's like 60 years of, at least 60 years of uh, computer science theory um, uh, to, and papers if you're interested in it. Uh, it's uh, limiting. It doesn't really give you scale unless you spend a lot of money on it. And if you spend a lot, it's, it's, it's capital intensive. Uh, it's not a mistake that the popular multiplayer apps of today, like Google Docs, Figma, AAA games, uh, uh, they're built by billion and trillion dollar companies. And I find that to be extremely frustrating because there's such a wide variety of experiences that we could build that go beyond just having rectangles and uh, uh, pointers. You could build beautiful drawing applications. Uh, I don't know how many of you have used uh, live share in VS Code to get somebody, share a link with somebody. They jump into the ID with you and start writing code. Uh, you can build games. This is Transport Tycoon, again, uh, showing my age here. Like This was a big game in the 90s. Uh, and I just love it. It's one of the better apps that I've had. Uh, at the heart of all these experiences is the idea that there is uh, an entity. It can be a drawing, a game. Uh, a song, there should be collaborative music apps, don't you think? Uh, some text, uh, and there will be multiple people who connect to it and start making um, uh, edits or hacking on it together and having state synchronized over these things. Uh, to talk about why this uh, problem is hard, why it's a hard uh, problem, uh, I figured for this group what we'll do is let's build a fancy multiplayer app together. Uh, all of you are extremely senior engineers. Uh, so I was thinking of what the most complex, fancy uh, idea, uh, what, what is the most 
what's the fanciest app that we could use uh, to build here? So let's build a shared counter, just a, a number that uh, increases one by one. Okay, fair enough. Uh, so the example code I use here uses Cloudflare worker syntax because I'm so predictable that way. But you, can use, uh, you could write this in PHP. You could write this in Node. It doesn't really matter. The co concept is really the same. Um, and even if the contrast is bad, don't worry. It's not, it's not the particularly complex code, but it's also my code, so it's not particularly good code. You, you have nothing to learn here. Okay, so we'll make a variable called count, uh, and we'll set up the server such that for every request that comes in, if it's a post method, it'll just increment it. Okay, so let's start with that. So anytime you send a post request, it'll just increment count. Um, then uh, let's actually start uh, constructing the UI as well. Uh, I discovered this uh, programming language called HTML. It's very much like JSX, but it uses zero JS for interactivity. I think we should all be looking into this. This is the future of computing, really. Uh, it's nice. There's, a, there's an inbuilt element called form, and there are actions like, I mean, the React team is so far behind in the past if they haven't discovered these things. Uh, anyway, so you make a form uh, where you spit out the value, the actual value of the counter, and you have also have a submit button that you can like actually uh, uh, click and it'll make a post to the root. So, uh, uh, so I, but this doesn't really look real time. It's just a static form. So we should add some technology to make it uh, real time. Uh, any ideas for what kind of technology we should use uh, in the front? What kind of tech should we use? Web sockets. Okay, that's a good example. Any, any, any huh? Web RTC. That's amazing. Anything else? Server sent events. There are so many great options, they all suck. Uh, I decided to use a set interval that refreshes the page every two seconds. <laughs> Extremely real time, just one line of uh, real time. Just come on, you're learning so much here right now. Uh, anyway, so that's the thing. And so now let's all just put it together. So you, uh, it's the function, it's the same thing, it's the counter. If it's post, it does that, otherwise it spits out the form with the magical uh, script tag. Uh, this is uh, JS in JS, uh, also another thing that I don't. Anyway, so you, you have a page and you can spit it out and you can do that. Okay, so uh, you run it locally with uh, Wrangler dev or Wurzel dev or Node, uh, Node whatever. Uh, and uh, you get, uh, also, I don't know if you know this, uh, browsers come with an inbuilt design system. I had to write, write no CSS for it to look so beautiful. I am a UI programmer, but after all, I care very deeply about the craft and how it is. Anyway, so you have a counting app, and every time you click increment, it increases the value and do this. Okay, so far, so good. Uh, so then you open up a second browser, uh, and you can test it the same way. So while I'm clicking in the second one, you wait for a couple of seconds, and the other page refreshes, and the value uh, synchronizes. Awesome, we have a multiplayer app in like about 20, 30 lines of code. That's amazing, right? We're done. Wow. Okay, so we'll push it to the internet. We'll uh, take some free hosting. You children don't know how cool it is that hosting is free nowadays. In my day, we had to donate bodily organs to get access to a server. But now it's mostly free, free so you say Wrangler deploy or WordCell deploy, publish, whatever. Uh, and you start noticing a problem. Uh, you reach out to one friend who opens this up on their phone, and they're clicking the increment button, and it's incrementing. So far, so good. Uh, you reach out to another friend. By this time, you've shared the link on Twitter, and a lot of people are clicking it and moving into it. Uh, and they don't see the number that the first person is seeing. They're seeing the number increment when they click, uh, when they click the button, but it's not the same number that the other person is this thing. They're not really seeing those things synchronize. Uh, then you reach out to, uh, you know, does everybody have that one couple of friends who are always a couple together. You can't ever talk to them like one by one, but you have to be friends with both of them because they're dating. Uh, so you reach out to them, and they are seeing, uh, they are just sitting together, and on their devices, they're seeing the same number, but they're not seeing the same number that these two people do. Uh, then you reach out to your five friends who are sitting on the grass and drinking beer. I just did this yesterday, by the way. It was wonderful in this weather. I, I, I was told Helsinki is cold. Like, you all are liars. You don't want anyone to show up here. It was wonderful. But uh, they're all sitting around having beers, and all of them can see the same number, but they're not seeing the same number that uh, the couple is seeing um, uh, or the ones that they are, uh, these other people are seeing. So what's going on? We developed this locally. We tested it with multiple browsers. It should have worked. Uh, the problem is that it turns out the model for local development is not the same as in production. 
mentally you might think that all of these people are hitting effectively not just the same server, but the same process, the same V8.js isolate that has hosted let count equals zero. So that anytime you do a post, you'd think that this one is incrementing. Uh, no, really what's happening because of the way that servers are deployed now in clusters on the edge across data centers, each one of them are connecting to the own uh, instance of this particular count zero. So anytime they click it, those are, those are the numbers that they're seeing. Uh, this problem does, isn't just about five, six, seven, eight, nine people in your friends group. Uh, it expands across the entire world. You can imagine, you can generalize this problem by saying, imagine you have hundreds, maybe thousands of users across the planet. To be clear, most of us have like three users, but we still argue about how we write CSS. We should shift it. We should look for product market fit before Tailwind is what I'm saying. Uh, anyway, so you have all these people across the planet. Uh, and you th think to yourself that, okay, fine, I want to deploy this thing, so I'm going to deploy it to a server, the little blue Oracle logo. Now that I see it, it looks like the Oracle logo. Uh, so you deploy it to one server, but uh, if you have hundreds and thousands of users, you know that the moment they all try to click the link and go into it, uh, the server will fall over. You don't really get scale. So uh, either via the magic edge compute network or clusters of servers or whatever it is, you end up distributing it across the planet. Uh, and you think to yourself, okay, fine, you know how I'm going to solve this problem? I'm going to uh, deploy, I'm going to deploy the value onto a database. I'm going to put like one record in the database and have every server talk to it. So you deploy a database somewhere, US East one, I hear it's very reliable. Uh, so you deploy it onto that, but then you have the same problem that the servers did. If all these servers start sending requests to it, uh, it's going to fall over. So you do the same thing with your databases, which is you have replicas of these databases across the planet. Uh, of course, now you're not really in control of how these users are connecting to all these pieces. They could be connecting to one particular server here, a database connection there, or the routing is all over the place. Um, to maintain some form of consistency, now you need to set up a replication algorithm. I don't know if you can see the little red dots across all the... Uh, uh, red uh, database, I forget which one that was, the red database. Uh, but also you need to now synchronize, even if you're doing something like real time, you want to make sure these web sockets are all also synchronized. So you need to set up this routing across all these servers as well. So what started as a 20 line, super fast write code, multiplayer complex app has now become a multi-million dollar, multi-month project. Uh, you're never going to ship this, you're done. And that is the problem with the internet. Like for the last 15 years, WebSockets were launched in Chrome in 2009. The spec was in 2008. The dream of building real-time apps has always been uh, alive. But some kid somewhere will build a little game on the weekend. And like, okay, this works. They try to deploy it and immediately they're like, oh shit, this takes way too much effort. And I don't want to use a US credit card to get a deployment host somewhere. I don't know. Um, the thing is that as a front-end developer, someone who cares about their CSS and what state management solution we are arguing about on Twitter that day, I don't really want to worry about the networking, the routing, and when I say routing, I don't mean like React router, I mean like literally how does your connection connect to a data center, the process management, these are things we had to worry about 20, 30 years ago, and I don't want to worry about that with thousands of service and look at analytics, no. As a front-end developer, as a highly paid skill developer, I want to argue about uh, CSS, I want to like actually be implementing my app, uh, whether we're talking about Redux, saying Redux also ages me now, I think. Like, even that tech is about eight years old. Uh, I don't know, man. Like, uh, what are the popular ones now? Signals. Yeah, bro. Like, uh, listen to the 24-year-old over here talking about signals. Anyway, uh, th those are the things I do want to care about, but I mean it. Uh, th I thought the entire promise of infrastructure providers was to take this away from me. Uh, so how do we solve it? Um, Obligatory uh, Cloudflare thing. Not only am I not uh, paid by Cloudflare to tell you this, like I sure would like to. So in the future, whoever's watching this video, you can cut the check, have your people speak to my people. They're really going to dig this tech right now. I worked at Cloudflare. Cloudflare does this thing where they cover the entire planet with servers. They're in something like 250, 70 something cities and 10,000 points of presence. Uh, they'll uh, if you breathe at them the wrong way, I think they'll come install a hardware thing behind your washing machine. Like, they want to cover the planet with computers and databases. Uh, and it turns out, uh, so if you go back to this diagram that I was doing, and you look at it closely, you realize that the thing that Cloudflare is good at is that part, the part that I don't actually want to care about. Um, like I said, I want to care about my users. 
the actual business logic, uh, the behavior of my application, and this is boring computer science bullshit I want Cloudflare to take care of. They are actually paid to do this thing. Uh, so in uh, 2020, uh, uh, I, I didn't even know what Cloudflare was at the time, but they published this thing about durable objects. Uh, very fascinating tech, as you can see, like uh, Samuel was talking about how you can build a horizontally scalable uh, session service and auth at the edge with it. Uh, it's very fascinating tech, and uh, it basically takes the idea of these workers, and it makes a couple of guarantees. It says, hey, for a given ID, remember an ID that denotes a document, a code base, or whatever, it'll guarantee that every user will connect to the same exact isolate. Uh, literally the magic sauce that I was looking for. It, uh, it, uh, first of all, it spins it up closest to the user that calls it, and eventually they might be able to move it across the planet depending on usage. Uh, but it means, for example, for everyone uh, in a particular time zone, everyone will connect not just to the same machine, but to the same process, which suddenly makes your programming model being able to say, let count equals zero, suddenly like viable. And it generalizes. It's not just about one object. You can have hundreds and thousands of these objects denoting each of these things, and it gra gracefully scales over all of their uh, infrastructure. So. Uh, I took this idea, uh, I said, I don't want your salary anymore, and I decided to make my own uh, little project. I call it PartyKit, it's now a company, it's a platform. And I call it, and it takes this use case of building collaborative real-time mul multiplayer apps. Also, it has a great logo, it's kind of fun. I got some, it's a hand-drawn logo by a friend of mine. It's an open source platform for collaboration. Uh, we provide the boring stuff. Uh, we give you the developer tooling to run these little applications on your, uh, not just on your local machine, but also in uh, GitHub tests, like during your CI, CD stuff. We give you little open source libraries that make stuff like CRDTs, which you learned about yesterday, uh, uh, easy to build backends for them, and a deployment platform. It's basically a layer on top of Cloudflare where you can take your code and run it on, uh, on these things. And, and I really like the API for this. All you say is you make a little object that says, hey, what happens anytime a WebSocket connects to a room? or when you send an HTTP request to a room. And the guarantee is that everybody who connects to a particular room, they're all also connecting inside the same process that's running. What that means is doing something like a broadcast can be literally a for loop on an array of web sockets. It's all very magical, it just sort of works. Uh, so that's the API. Uh, what I really, really like about it is I'm a developer, like I said, I kind of like writing code. Uh, and it, it, it's customizable, you get to write the code based on the trade-offs that you want. Uh, you can use YJS, which is a very popular CRDT library for which you can build amazing applications like Verb was yesterday. Uh, you can use uh, AutoMerge, which is by the folks at Ink and Switch. You can use XState by the folks at Stately. You can use Redux. It doesn't matter. You can just make a little object and throw events at it and just do last right wins. It doesn't matter. It's up to you to decide what the trade-offs are. And when you decide to change your approach, PartyKit will still be there for you. You don't have to change providers. Uh, you can just change the code and uh, make sure you have, uh, uh, make sure you uh, don't break your users, I guess. It just sort of works. Uh, and even the, uh, the command line tools for it to run it is like super nice. You can just say, hey, you write a little entry point like that. Use NPM modules, use TypeScript, use Wasm. I don't care, like it just sort of works. Uh, we bundle it and you can run it locally and once you're happy with it, you can actually deploy it to the platform. Uh, and that's not all, it actually comes with a number of other features. I've been saying that these are features that make it useful to everyone, but really these are features that make it useful to me. So for example, you have previews, much like Vercel and Netlify, it will, um, uh, it generate, you can generate a preview per GitHub PR before you even uh, land your code. Uh, I think Pages also does this, right? You have Pages, in fact, that's one of the cool features. And I was like, yeah, that's the feature that I want to steal. And it works great with systems that do that as well. So you can generate uh, previews before you even land your code. You can do environment management if you're connecting to databases and you have little keys or API keys to open AI, whatever. Logs, uh, what, uh, these things are running in hundreds and thousands of points across the planet. Uh, you can just say party kit tail and it takes all these, all your console logs, request responses, and it brings it into your terminal. So anytime things are going wrong, you can look at the 500s and stuff. It's cross-platform, which is just simply because it's based on standards. Like if you want to use right, a mobile app or if one of you is going to spend three and a half thousand dollars on a headset, you can connect to party kit from that. Sure, it's nice to have a low latency platform like party kit to build 
I don't know, like, will you spend $500 on an app? Once you spend three and a half on the actual headset, you might as well just uh, take a loan out to buy the apps as well. Uh, integrations, one of the things about PartyKit that I really uh, feel strongly about is that it should work with your existing stack. Let's say you're already using Vercel, Netlify, Fly, Railway. You can keep using that for the rest of your app, but you can do all the multiplayer networking across PartyKit, which is so great. Each stack has its own trade-offs. And analytics, very simply. Hey, how many active connections were there in the last day? How many uh, rooms were opened up? Which are the users of mine uh, that are taking uh, uh, way, are using it way too much? Should I charge them for it? Uh, you can actually pass these costs on to yourself. So these are like just features that make PartyKit incredibly useful. All right, so I know the Wi-Fi has been a little icky, but are you all ready for a demo? Do you all want to participate in the demo? Yeah? All right, so I'm going to put up a drawing app. And there are going to be four QR codes on screen. Feel free to pick any of them and jump into them, OK? Fair? It's a drawing app called Together by the folks at tldraw.com. It's a nice little collaborative app. Uh, I'm going to count till about 10, 15. Uh, just tell me if it's working, and then we'll actually have it running as well. So we'll see it on screen, all of you in the thing. We're going to see how, how much the Wi-Fi can take a pounding right now. This might not be particularly great. Um, but yeah, it's a little collaborative app. OK, everybody's on it. OK, let's. Uh, OK, uh, three of them landed. Wait, maybe I should just try refreshing this one. Oh, no, people got into the fourth one as well. This is it. Everyone's uh, drawing collaboratively. Don't write anything rude. Actually, now that I've said that, I'm sure somebody will, so I'm just already going to go. OK, cool, awesome. Oh, uh, <laughs> there. I love that photo, by the way. Um, what I want to point out about the app is that it's extremely, it's a lot of fun, by the way. It's just extremely YB to just sit on it and see everyone's going up and down. You can start looking at me back again, by the way, like those links exist. No, actually, go ahead and play it. It's fun. Uh, I want to point out a couple of things. Uh, one is it scales across the planet. It's fine. Uh, two, it was made by one guy on one evening. It's not a big team that did it. And I want to show you the backend code for this, how complex and complicated the backend code to build something like this is. Uh, it's these eight lines of code. And with TypeScript, like you can actually make it smaller if you don't care about types, I guess. And I love that. I love the vibe of somebody being able to say, yeah, it's about eight lines of standard code. GC means garbage collection. Uh, we come with libraries. YPartyKit is a backend for YJS. Uh, and you can do this on day one, and it's production ready. Maybe you want to add some extra code to make auth. OK, only Google logged in users in a group. You get to customize it, but this is really what gets you to production. The delta from becoming a multi-million dollar project that requires a big maintenance team to just being able to write this and build a fun, collaborative experience, f fairly high perf, depending on the Wi-Fi. I'm quite happy about that. That's what it takes. That's what PartyKit uh, does for uh, building these applications. So. Kind of have that working. So what comes next? Like now that we can build like little drawing apps, what are the things that we can do with this kind of technology? Um, how much time do I have? I have some time. I don't care. Um, well, let's revisit this drawing, right? Like so, uh, you have multiple people who are working on things. It could be a drawing. It could be a song. It could be a big white screen. Um, uh, but uh, it starts getting curious. There's a little spot there. What happens if you connect little AI LLM robots into it? Uh, I was super fascinated by this, but Yanni and Verb actually took it and made it a reality. How do you build an experience where you start collaborating with actual machines? And not just in a chat GPT, hey, uh, say, uh, sing a song to me in the style of a 40s gangster. Thing. No, like you can actually build meaningful experiences. Uh, but this is not the only kind of architecture that you might want to build. Folks might already be familiar with this. This is the co-pilot model where every user has their own little AI that's helping them out. Then they click a live share button and they get into a shared space. So it's like five 10x programmers in the same space. Everyone knows that if you put five 10x programmers in the same space, you get uh, a 50x programmer, right? Like uh, the bigger the egos and the smarter the people, the teams uh, achieve a lot more. But I love this. It's actually quite fascinating to use like this. Uh, you should be able to do multi-party support. I did mention the idea of one entity, but what if you had multiple types of entities? What if you had a user.ts that den denoted the behavior for a particular user, where multiple devices would connect through it and implement something like the auth that Samuel showed us? Uh, this is a chat room, but if, imagine that it was covered by a rate limiter that noticed that you were sending too many messages or some dirty words and applied some filtering logic over there. I like that. 
Uh, I've been working with the folks at Stately to what happens if you run state machines on the edge and they're collaborative where you're able to get insight into the state of the machine and possibly make changes to it. Uh, and the big one that we'll probably be working on later this year is, so one of the trade-offs of the party kit model is, since, since it's all connecting to the same isolate, and in Cloudflare, I think it's about 128 MB RAM and like a shitty CPU. Um, so it, it can only do about like 40, 50 people in a given room, which is fine. You have more than 50 people in a Google Doc, you have a bigger problem. I, like you need to figure out your org structure. Uh, but really, there are use cases where you might want a lot of people. So how can, how can we put thousands of people in the same room? What if we wanted to uh, build chat systems like Discord, which has th have thousands of people? Uh, I'm very excited to explore all of these. Uh, and uh, I, think we'll, I think we're going to solve pretty much all of these things over the rest of the year. I think it's going to be quite exciting. So that is party kit. I do have one more thing to share, though. Um, so I'm an open source developer, which is the most communist thing in the world, I think. Just everybody owns the means of development and production. Um, a month ago, when I was uh, giving a similar talk at React Miami, and I was on stage, and I managed to open source the repository so that people can actually see the code. That's just how I work. I don't really want to like hide the code or anything. Um, but the platform currently uh, isn't opened. The w uh, by the way, this is the repository. It's super nice. It's uh, partykit slash partykit on GitHub. Uh, of course you can't. Uh, ugh, how do I move this back? Wait, 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 okay, wait, wait, I'll fix this, I'll fix this, don't worry. This is the thing that I should have actually fixed. Where's displays in this? Uh, displays, um, range, how do I say mirror? How do I say mirror? Oh, uh, wait, wait. Bro, they keep changing these uh, UIs every single time. Oh, wait, wait, I think I know. I, I actually, I think I do. What if I just do full screen here? Oh, that won't work. Sorry? Yeah, go back to multi. Oh, there it is. Okay, okay, mirror. Okay, now you get to see all my, okay, cool, uh, it's here. Okay, so the repository is particuit slash particuit. Please give me a star. I need social validation so badly. Uh, thank you, thank you. Oh, 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 don't, no, oh, oh, oh. I'm glad I didn't have to ask you to do that for me. Uh, anyway, so this is the repository. Uh, me and Sylvia have actually been working a little bit on this. Thanks so much, Sylvia. We've actually started writing docs. There's an uh, introduction, uh, which is great. Uh, quick start, and we'll have, a, we have some examples, but we'll have better examples. I wrote a little reference for all the commands that you can run. But the thing is, the thing, is that uh, right now I've whitelisted it. I actually like been whitelisting users. These are all the people that I have. These are the only people who are allowed to deploy onto this platform right now. Um, I don't like that either. Uh, so I was thinking about it yesterday and it struck me that I have this code here which says if whitelist includes user, just like cancel it. So how would you all feel if I just opened this up to everyone right now? Yeah? Okay, let's see if it works. Terminal. Oh, God, I should have actually. Uh, okay. Should I do it? Should I hit enter? I might break everything, but who cares, right? Yeah? Okay, okay. if this works, if the Wi-Fi cooperates. Uh, come on, man. Okay, okay, yes, yes. Keep going, keep going, and come on. <laughs> come on, it's done. You can now deploy onto party kit. It's now open to the world. I don't care, man. Like, I assume some of you are going to abuse it. Some of you are going to build some shitty stuff, but let's see, hit me, like, hit me with your hardest shot. If you're watching this video in the future, yeah, yeah, just you can just say party kit dev right now, party kit deploy. Uh, it's open to everyone. This is the scariest moment of my life. Uh, I expect to see the Cloudflare bill next month and shit my pants. Uh, it should be fun. Uh, anyway, okay, okay uh, let's, uh, let's, go back, uh, let's go back here. Uh, anyway, so uh, that's Party Kit. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to tell you these things. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. 
Uh, again, I like to get those numbers up. Please follow me. I have a party kit account as well where we keep sharing uh, uh, progress and big, much bigger announcements actually showing up in the next month or two. We have a website which has a sign-up sheet which I think I can just remove now, I guess, because, hell, you're able to deploy it. Uh, that's party kit. Please feel free to come up to me and chat, and I'm happy to share more about it.